The following program is rated T for Teen for the use of tools and materials that can be harmful to unsupervised usage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Mr. Y here from Mr. Y Media, and yes, that is my actual name. Today is promised, the speed painting challenge, Orcs of Dominion. Now you might have caught one of the previous episodes where I did a full unboxing of the Dominion set. And in it, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I decided to do a speed painting challenge. The entire orc half of the Dominion set. Now full disclosure, I have already built the models and I've applied sand to the bases. After all, the glue drying is the longest element. Same with priming the models with a black spray can. Other than that though, I've given myself one day to paint the entire orc army. Can I do it? Let's get started. Let's just jump right into this thing. We're going to start with the flesh segments. This is going to be a three-step process, and we're going to start with some Castellian Green from Citadel Paints. To be completely honest, most of the paints I'm going to use are from Citadel, just so you know. And this is going to be put onto every exposed piece of flesh, from the faces to the arms, the feet, etc., etc. For the next layer, we're going to use Lauren Forest, and this is going to be applied to all the raised areas of the muscles. So a little bit of the previous layer will still be showing through. Um, you'll notice this especially on the hands and the feet. A little bit of the green is still going to be between the toes and fingers. We're going to follow up with our final layer, which is Death Guard Green. And that's going to be dry brushed even lighter on the flesh areas. Uh, mostly on any place that is raised. Kneecaps, the toes, the elbows, certain high points of the cheeks and the ears. That way, again, the two previous layers will still be showing through, but this new one will be sort of the dominant color, if you will. And you're going to get something that looks a little bit like this. Nice, quick and easy, three different steps to do pretty decent orc flesh. All right, let's jump into the cloth now. We're gonna use a very traditional color scheme from my dad's army we've had for over 25 years. It's reds and black. It's a very striking color in contrast with the green flesh. For the first layer, it is a very nice scarlet color called corn red. And this is gonna be put on mostly the upper cloth, the, the tunic, the cloak, uh, parts of the hood, etc. And of course, that's gonna be plastered on the front of these shields. Um, for those of you, we'll show in a little second here, uh, the shields are actually, from what I gather, it's squig hide stretched over a shield. So it's got a big snarly face on the front of it with teeth and eyes and everything. So it's pretty gruesome and, uh, <laughs> it'll definitely pop out. And for the next layer, we're going to use a vibrant blood color known as Mephiston Red. And this is going to be used along the edges of the cloth and erased areas so that some of the scarlet is still going to be seen underneath it. And uh, especially on the shield here, it's really going to make all these areas really pop out. And this is what it looks like with the flesh done and the cloth. Nice quick steps here, nothing overly complicated. And for the next layer of cloth, we're going to use some gloss black and apply it on any area that didn't get hit by the red already. Now, you may be wondering, why the gloss black? It's kind of interesting. When you've already cut it with some inks and washes, it still retains a bit of its glossiness, which makes it look like it's oily and just this nasty substance, perfect for an orc. With that out of the way, we're now going to jump into the metallic areas. For this one, it's anything that is scraps of armor, uh, the weapon blades, some of them have belt buckles. Even on the front of their shields, there's pieces of metal that have just been hammered into place. That's probably what's holding the squig hide into place. Uh, so yeah, anywhere metallic, just slap down some basic colors here. This is lead belchers, aka the gun metal. It's a pretty common color. You can find it across most acrylic lines. All right, we're now gonna tackle some of the miscellaneous brown elements. And this is gonna be another three-step process. This is gonna be any wrappings around their legs or their arms, uh, any belts, any pouches, any spear shafts or wooden elements, and the bases a little bit later on as well. 
For the first layer, we're going to use Rhinox Hide, which is a nice dark chocolate color, and that will be used pretty liberally across all of these elements. Once that is out of the way, we're going to go back in with some Morn Fang Brown, which is, well, a medium brown color. And this is going to be dry brushed across all of these elements that we just laid down the Rhinox Hide on. Um, you're still going to show a little bit of the darker chocolate brown from underneath, but for the most part, this will become sort of the dominant color. And this whole color palette is across the entire board of the orc army. We're talking from the lowest of goblins to the mighty war boss who's riding on the Nashtuf. Now that thing has this leathery hide, and I'm using the same brown technique that you're seeing here. So across the board, same colors, and if you are interested, let me know in the comments below. I will release a separate video of just painting the Nashtuf, if you're interested. But as for now, here is two coats of brown on the orc boy. The final layer of the brown is called Steel Legion Drab, and this is a very light brown color. And as I've always said, the lighter my colors become, the lighter my brush strokes are as well. This is a very light dusting, mostly along the raised areas of the pouches, the belts, uh, on the spear shafts. Any knobs of wood are getting a little bit of a light dusting, and that's about it. Nice, quick, and easy. Another three steps, and we've got all of our brown elements finished. All right, it's now time to start working on some details. For this one, we're going to go in with a generic white. Uh, pretty common across all the acrylic lines. In fact, if you don't have this in your collection, I worry about you as an artist. We're going to go in and start working on the teeth and the claws, and we'll also do the toenails. This handsome chap, for example, has four toes on one foot and six on the other, something I can relate to. And once we get that out of the way, any skulls they might have on their person as trophies, etc. There are little details of stitches. In between all the cloth elements, it's being held together by stitches, hopes, and dreams. It's kind of like my summer wardrobe. And I'm going to go in with the very fine detailed brush and start using white on all the stitches. This makes even a basic grunt like this guy really pop out. It's those little extra details that really bring it to life. And don't worry, even though we are using a white, once a nice wash has gone over it, it's all going to look grimy, just as an orc would want it. And this is what this handsome devil's looking like right now. He's very skinny, I worry about him. He looks like he's 80 pounds wet. How is this supposed to be a green skin? How is he supposed to inspire fear when, like, I'm pretty sure a 13-year-old could beat the snot out of him? Oh, it just it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Oh, and by the way, we're also painting the bases right now. It's the same three brown colors that we used before. It's the Rhinox Hide, the Mourn Found Brang, and the Steel Legion Drab. So just rinse and repeat. But I don't get it. What was the conference call like? It's like, ah, oh, gee, Gary, we need to make the Sigmarines even bigger and scarier than before. Oh, I know. How about we make the orcs even more pathetic? Yeah, let's make them like 80 pounds wet and a stiff breeze could blow them over. Brilliant! I haven't felt this inspired since Matt Ward was our lead designer. Uh, and there you have it, folks. That is the official audio from their meeting. So if you're ever wondering why your orc suddenly looks like it hasn't even hit puberty, it's because the Stormcast Eternals have stick envy. But look at that base. That is beautiful. He's such a handsome little fella. Look at that skinny arm. Pretty sure his spear shaft is thicker than his arm is. But the base looks nice. Yeah, that looks really nice. Alright, we're now going to use the Miracle Cure-All, known as Agrax Earthshade, and just dunk our model in there. You know what? It's probably faster that way. There we go. Just dunk him in. Wipe it off. Dunk it in again. There you go. Liquid talent in a jar. Voila! We're done. Yeah. Look at that handsome fella. So dapper looking. Alright, for the final step, we're going to go in with some Elmer's glue, put it in little patches here and there before spreading it with a tiny stick. And then we're going to dip the model into some green flock. Now make sure that your Agrax Earthshade is fully dry before you do this, otherwise it can stick unwanted places. Uh, and just tap off the excess. Until voila, we have our finished product. Now, this is a very basic color scheme, and I managed to paint this guy very quickly. And with the rest of the army following in the exact same footsteps, it was done in a day. Now, let's take a look at all the individual elements of this army, starting with the humble orc boys. So here's our main guy and a couple of his mates. One's got a little more intricate shield, one's got a funky helmet, but uniformly, they're all skinny. 
Next up, we have the goblins. Now, in a lot of the official art, they are got a different skin color than the other guys, but for me, green skins are meant to be green. And here is our shaman. It follows the exact same footsteps as the orc boys, except his spells and his bottles have a bright neon highlight to them. As for the banner bearer, he's also identical to the orc boys, except there's a little extra purple on the totem's tongue. You'll also notice that there are eyes that are bright yellow on there. It's the same on the shields. For whatever reason, uh, the footage didn't come through when I was filming. So yes, add yellow eyes to all the shields as well. Makes it really pop out. And then here we have the uh, crossbow orcs. Uh, these are identical as well. The little extra metal maybe on the uh, crossbow. That's about it. And finally, we have the big guy. So this is... Well, pretty much the same. The animal hide, as I mentioned, is three tones of brown. There's a severed head that is above him uh, that has a little extra flesh in it, a little extra blood splatter here and there, but uh, yeah, exact same color palette across the board. And this guy looks amazing. I really like this. So here it is. All the army in glorious rank and file and square bases as fantasy is meant to be played. I might be a bit biased. Hope you guys enjoyed. Well, that's been today's episode. Hope you guys liked it. Maybe found some useful information in there. If you did, make sure you hit the like, the share, subscribe down below. And please, pass this around to all your friends. We're really trying to build the channel from the ground up. If there's anything that you want me to build next season, let me know in the comments down below. And maybe we'll be able to do it in an upcoming episode. Speaking of... Let me know if you'd actually be interested in a spin-off episode of the Orc War Chief that you saw in this episode. I figure because it is the exact same color as all the other guys, and it's pretty much step-by-step -step exactly the same with maybe a couple touch-ups here and there, it was a little bit redundant. It would have doubled the length of this episode. But if you would like to see that as its own separate entity, put in the comments down below. I'm more than happy to release the footage. On that note, I've been Mr. Waugh from Mr. Waugh Media. Hope you're thoroughly entertained. We'll catch you on the next one. Can't fall down.